Hello folks, I am The Bitter Clinger, and this is a preview of the new changes coming to World of Warplanes in the upcoming 1.4 release. I want to start by letting folks know up front what I will not be talking about in this preview. I will not be covering the physics and balance changes, also known as the Great Mustang Nerf. Since I've always thought that entire line was crap until you get to the P-51D, I don't have any of these aircraft to use for testing. I will also not be getting into the plane and tech tree changes. I just don't have enough knowledge of the different configurations for aircraft and the impact each module has to really talk about this intelligently and to know what impact these changes could have. Now let me tell you what I will be covering. First, I'll be getting into the new SD and HD game clients and showing you some side-by-side -side video from both. I'll be covering some UI graphical changes, including the new approaching battle cinematic and the staged lead compensating aim point. I'll be giving you a tour of two new maps, one of which is a moonlight map, and I'll give you my thoughts on some and some numbers on the new matchmaker. Finally, I'll share my suspicions on stealth changes being made to the RNG for World of Warplanes. What does Wargaming mean by SD and HD? I don't know, but it has nothing to do with standard definition or high definition. It has more to do with 64-bit texture quality on high-end machines, but they couldn't call the different clients 32 and 64 because that would give people the impression that it was a 64-bit client, and that would be wrong. This HD stuff is basically about the quality and size of textures used in the game. When I say size, I'm talking about an additional 5 gigabytes of hard drive space required for the HD client. Who knows, maybe HD stands for hard drive because World of Warplanes HD has a 28 gigabyte footprint on disk compared to the 23 gigabyte footprint of the SD version. Alright, so let's talk, how does it look? Is it worth it? Let's start by taking a look at map textures and ground objects in a side-by-side -side video. The 1.3.1 client is on the left, and the 1.4 HD client is on the right. Graphic settings are set to very high on both clients. A quick side note, I have motion blur disabled, as I do in all my games. Well, you tell me, is it worth it? I'm not seeing any difference here at all. The 64-bit textures don't seem to be a factor for the static assets. Maybe someone with a better GPU might see a difference, but I'm sure I don't. Now let's take a look at the aircraft. Here I do see a difference, but not on every plane. The 32-bit textures on the F2G have a very glossy finish. It looks like a, the plane on the left has been buffed and polished to a high shine. The 64-bit textures on the right have a more worn, and matted look on the aircraft. On the other hand, looking at the BF-110C6, the differences here are so subtle, I might be fooling myself into thinking that there are differences. This is not very compelling evidence here. So is the HD client worth an extra download time and 5 gigabytes of disk space? I think each person will have to make up their own mind on that, but I can tell you that no one running the SD client needs to feel like they're missing out on anything. Now let's talk about the, some changes everyone will be seeing regardless of which client they've installed, starting with the approaching battle cinematic. That's it. That's what all the hubbub is about. Now, don't let me downplay this too much because this change includes a feature I've wanted for a long time. The ability to return to the pre-battle team panel. 
I spend the loading time before most battles checking out each plane on the enemy team. I do this to determine how I will approach each aircraft, whether I can turn and burn them, or boom and zoom them. Since I'm trying to commit this information to memory, I sometimes run out of time before reaching the 10 second countdown. So it's nice to be able to head back to the loading screen. The introduction of the battle approach cinematic includes the ability to do just that. By pressing the space bar, allowing me, me a few more seconds of pre-battle reconnaissance. The other change I'll go over in this section is what Wargaming refers to as the lead compensating aim point, otherwise known as that red circle you shoot at in front of the enemy plane. We still have the red circle as before, but this is only one of the possible four new shapes this can take. Let's go through the four stages now. Stage one, you're too far away. You have a gray point on a lead vector indicating your target is beyond the maximum range of your weapons. Stage two, you're still too far away. You have a small red circle on the lead vector indicating your target is at or near the maximum range of your weapons. Stage three, take aim. Now we see the familiar red circle which now indicates that your target is in effective range for all your weapons. Stage four, fire. A red crosshair is added to the red circle indicating that you can now accurately hit your target with all weapons. All of this makes for an interesting addition to the game. I suppose it could help new, new players avoid overheating their guns when they're still a thousand meters away from the nearest enemy. But like the current red circle, it still requires the pilot to use their own judgment most of the time. Here's a perfect example. I never get a crosshair on this pass at the enemy, indicating I can fire accurately at the target, but I still manage to burn down half this guy's health before he accelerates out of range of my weapons. So like I said, this one is a nice to have, but I recommend continuing to rely on your own experience for shooting enemies. Alright, let's move on to new content, starting with the new map, Hidden Air Base. There are a couple of things that strike me about this map. First, it's gorgeous. I really love the sun on the ice and snow and the water, just lovely. Second, it's interesting. You have ships fighting it out in the ice fjords, surface fires on the water, flak bursts in the distance, and what looked to me like some opportunities for follow the leader contests. The most important thing I notice about the map is it's an attack aircraft paradise. An attack aircraft with camouflage flying down in between these ice formations would be nearly invisible. Also, notice that an IL could probably fly right underneath the furball of fighters using these cracks and crevices right down the middle of the map and remain unseen the entire time. None of that even compares to the opportunity for racking up ground targets. Look at the number of AA guns surrounding headquarters with a relatively low number of hit, hit points. Allowing an attack aircraft to run loose around your headquarters on this map could easily hand your enemies an 8 to 10 point supremacy advantage in a very short time. The other new map being introduced in the version 1.4 release is Winter War. It's a night map, or a moonlight map if you prefer. Uh, for me, I'm not so sure I prefer. It has nothing to do with the quality of the map. It looks absolutely stunning and completely different than anything I've seen in the game so far. It's got fires burning through the night, artillery exchanges on the horizon, and another opportunity for a follow the leader contest. 
My problem with this map is personal. Uh, I'm nearsighted and require glasses to clearly see things more than an arm's length away. However, I don't wear glasses while playing video games for a number of reasons, but it usually works out okay. Having said that, I must admit this nighttime map makes me extremely nervous. Despite how exotic and intriguing this map may be, I'm concerned about my ability to spot aircraft. I tried for a couple of days to get a random battle on this map, but it just wasn't in the cards. So I look forward to experiencing this map, Winter War, as it should be, right along with everyone else once the 1.4 update goes live. Let's talk matchmaker changes. The first change to the 1.4 matchmaker addresses the problem of flights. This is something I've wanted to see for some time. The current matchmaker doesn't even attempt to match flights against equal tier and type of aircraft to say nothing of an opposing flight. So if three people form a flight of tier 8 ME-262 heavy fighters, it's often the case that they will face one or maybe two tier 8 enemy aircraft on the other team and not even necessarily heavy fighters. I've always been a proponent of making flights wait in the queue until they can be matched up with equal aircraft, if not an equal flight. The new matchmaker at least states that it is attempting a solution in that direction. The other issue the matchmaker is addressing is tier progression compared to the general population. Depending on what time of day you play World of Warplanes, you could end up bottom tier in every battle you fight. This is particularly true for tier 3 and tier 4 aircraft. The new 1.4 matchmaker claims to be addressing this issue. My own experience on the test server is unscientific. 28 battles is not nearly enough to test these changes. Having said that, I will tell you that of the 28 battles I flew in tier 6 to tier 8 aircraft, I was top tier in 14 battles and bottom tier in 14 battles. The problem with adding restrictions uh, on the conditions under which you may join a battle is that you often find yourself in battles like this, and this, and this. Despite the server population that would support more populated battles under less stringent matchmaking conditions. At long last, we come to the conspiracy theory part of the show. Put on your tinfoil hats, because I've had and continue to have a number of conspiracy theories surrounding World Warplanes. Well, now I can add one more based on my observations of the changes in the 1.4 test server. I believe fire is going to be much more of a factor once this release goes live. If you don't already carry a fire extinguisher on every aircraft, I would recommend correcting that mistake before 1.4 is released. After version 1.4 is released, keep an anecdotal eye on the number of times you catch fire. The 20,000 credits for the automatic fire extinguisher may soon become a bargain. Again, this is just a suspicion based on personal observations, but I truly believe a dramatic change has occurred in this area of the RNG and is headed to a live server near you. Wow, I think we've covered a lot of material here. If you like what you see here and want to be informed as more becomes available, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, you can follow me on Twitter to receive a notification when I publish a new video, including win, lose, or draw videos. That's it for now. I hope to see you in the skies. This is Bitter Clinger, signing out.